reflection of light. Now we are very familiar with this phenomena of reflection of light. We see that when light falls on any surface, a part of it bounces back in the same medium. This phenomena is called reflection. So when light falls on a surface, a part of the light bounces back into the same medium. This phenomena is called reflection. So the bouncing back of light in the same medium is reflection. The next thing we need to learn is the nature of this reflected ray. The ray that comes in is called the incident ray and this incident ray when it is reflected by the surface it follows a certain path. It just does not randomly go in any direction but it follows a certain path. The path followed by this reflected ray is governed by the laws of a reflection. So we'll now go in detail in the laws of reflection. To understand the laws of reflection, first we will see what you mean by the incident ray. The incident ray is the ray that comes in, that hits the surface. This is called the incident ray. And the ray that reflects back, which goes back into the same medium, is called the reflected ray. Now this angle between the incident ray and the normal, the normal is, this is the normal, it's a 90 degrees drawn through the, to the surface at the point of incidence. The point of incidence is out here. And a 90 degrees drawn at the point of incidence is called the normal. So the angle between the incident ray and the normal is called the angle of incidence. So here is the angle of incidence and it is defined as the angle between the incident ray and the normal. Now the angle between the normal and the reflected ray is called angle of reflection. So angle of reflection is the angle between the reflected ray and the normal. So in this figure, if I mark this point as A, this point here as O, and this is B, here this angle, I'll mark this as N. So this angle B O N will be angle of incidence. So let me write that. Here will be angle B O N. And the angle of reflection will be between the reflected ray that is A O N. This will be the angle of reflection. That is angle A O N. So we have learned what is the reflected ray, what is the incident ray, what is the normal, what is the angle of reflection and what is the angle of incidence. Now that we know these terms, let us learn the laws of reflection. Laws of reflection. The first law says the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Let us mark the angle of incidence in this picture. So here is the angle of incidence between the incident ray and the normal is equal to angle of reflection. This is the reflected ray and here is the normal. So here is the angle of reflection. So the angle of incidence equal to the angle of reflection, which means if this is 30 degrees, this also will be 30 degrees. The next it says that the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal at the point of incidence lie in one plane. So all these three, the reflected ray, the incident ray and the normal, all three lie in one plane. 
the characteristics of an image in a plane mirror. The first characteristics is that the distance between the object and the mirror is equal to the distance between the mirror and the image. So we can say here the object distance is equal to the image distance. I repeat again the distance between the object and the mirror is equal to the distance between the mirror and the image. Next is the image is virtual. It cannot be captured on a screen and it is erect. Like you see in the picture when we see ourselves in the mirror, we see ourselves erect. The next is the size of the image is equal to the size of the object. So here see this is the image and the size of the object also becomes exactly equal. So size of image equal to size of object. So image is equal to the size of object. And the image is laterally inverted. Now what is the meaning of laterally inverted? Look up at this picture. If you stand in front of the mirror and you lift up your left hand, it appears like the right hand on the other side, right? So the left, left side of, of a person appears to be the right side of the image. Like here also you can see lateral inversion. It's seen very well in alphabets. If you put alphabets in front of the mirror, like here we have R kept in front of the mirror, it appears inverted. So lateral inversion or the image is laterally inverted means when the right side of the object appears to become the left side, of the image and the left side of the object becomes the right side of the image. And this is seen even more clearly in the ambulance. Have you seen in the ambulance how they write the word ambulance? They write it, it's lateral, it's image is written there because when you see in the rear view mirror of your car, here is the rear view mirror of your car and you can read the word ambulance properly, see here it gets laterally inverted so the ambulance can be read properly. So when we go over, just go over the characteristics of plane mirror, object distance equal to image distance, image is virtual and erect, size of image is equal to size of object and image is laterally inverted. We'll now see the definition of a virtual image and a real image. A virtual image is an image that cannot be captured on the screen like that of a plane mirror and of all most of the mirrors. A real image is an image that is captured on a screen. It's a kind of image that we see in the cinema hall. We see the screen and there is an image that is captured on the screen. It's called a real image.